Hello and welcome to another video. So in this one, I'm gonna show you how to create your very first Facebook ad or meta ad step by step. So we're gonna be jumping into my ad account. I'm gonna take you through the whole process from beginning to end and show you how to launch your very first Facebook ad campaign. There's a lot of people jumping into e-commerce, jumping into drop shipping at the moment, trying to take advantage of Q4. However, they have very little, if not zero experience when it comes to running ads on Facebook. So my goal for you in this video is to be able to follow me click for click, step by step, and at the end, have your very first Facebook ad campaign launched and active, fingers crossed, which will hopefully lead on to making your very first sale. And with that being said, thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoy it and let's jump straight into it so here we are in an inactive facebook ad account and this is essentially what i would do if i was starting from scratch from the very beginning about to advertise a product for the very first time straight away we need to create a campaign and our campaign objective is going to be sales so that's the selection i'm going to make and then i'm going to continue on and let this just preload up before we make any changes. So the campaign name is gonna be the name of the product. This is for an old ad account called Pools for Paws. So this is going to be a dog pool because that's the products I'm gonna be selling in this campaign. I like to separate my products per campaign and I'm also gonna call this L1. So what that tells me, this is my own personal preference. You can structure your ad account a way that makes sense to you. But I typically work on levels. So if I see L1, then I know what the budget is for that. I know what the targeting is for that. And I know exactly what needs to happen next. And I know what kind of results to expect. No special ad categories. We're gonna stick with auction. We are gonna stick with sales, which we've already pre-selected. And at this point, we're gonna leave both of these switched off as well. So on we march onto the ad set options. And this is where things can get complicated if you're new to Facebook ads. At the top, we can leave this blank. We'll come back and change that in a second, depending on what our targeting criteria is going to be for this ad set. So our conversion location is of course on our Shopify website. We have our pixel installed. Just make sure you've got yours created and installed correctly. The conversion event we're going for is purchases. We're not gonna bother with any of the others. We want Facebook to go out there and find people who are gonna purchase our product. So that's gonna be the conversion, the target conversion event. No dynamic creatives, we're gonna to stick to the basics for now. We're gonna find and try and establish what works. And then once we've found what works, we can double down on that. And then we can start getting fancy with some of the different options. The daily budget, this will vary person to person. Me personally, this time of year, I'll probably go straight to eight or 10 pounds per day. Um, if you haven't seen my Facebook ads mini course, I highly recommend you check that out. So the reason why I go for 10 pounds per day is because I want to add bit, outbid. I want to outbid. I want to tell Facebook that I'm willing to spend more than the next person. And most people tend to start Facebook with five pounds per day. So if I go straight in with 10 pounds, instantly that's going to make my ad set have a higher total value you'll understand what that means if you've seen that course it's a free course it's on my youtube channel so essentially it's going to make me look more preferential or higher up in the pecking order so to speak when it comes to facebook picking who's going to win the impression of that ad set as for the start date i'm just going to leave that default some people like to put the next day at midnight but Rarely it makes a difference, so I tend to just kind of keep it simple, leave it default. I don't set an end date either. I look at my ad account every single night, um, so there's no need to set an end date. It's not like I'm going away and can't keep a monitoring on this, or it's a super high budget and I can't afford to let this run one day longer than it needs to. So we can keep going down. No need to look at these advanced options. You only get ads scheduling if you use lifetime budgets. Um, again, we'll keep it simple for now. Where this comes in handy is at least for me then from my personal experience, my sales have, there's certain times throughout the day where they peak in and they spike or they more sales come through at certain hours, basically what I'm trying to say. So in that instance, what I would do is set a lifetime budget and only run my ads during those most profitable hours. So moving into the audience, this is probably the most important thing you can do that's gonna influence the results of your ads other than the actual creative you're using and the products in that you're selling. Um, so no custom audiences, um, essentially we're gonna be targeting cold audiences, people who have never seen our products before. I'm gonna to stick to the UK, being based in the UK myself. Um, we're gonna go for all age ranges and we're gonna go for all genders. And the reason we do this is because this is the very first Facebook ad we're running. Unless we're experienced and we know 100% that it's 50 plus 
males or 50 plus females or 21 plus females, then we want Facebook to go out there and show our ads to all of these people, all of these demographics, and it will give us a breakdown of all the different age ranges, all the different genders, and we'll be able to see essentially where the interest is coming from. So it's better to kind of have a leave no stone unturned approach than try and guess and get it wrong and risk losing your time and losing your money as well. In this detailed targeting box, this is essentially we're going to include people who match certain objectives or certain behaviors or certain interests. So I'm advertising a dog pool um, from experience, somebody who owns a large dog, a large long haired black dog who suffers in the sun. That's going to be my target market. I want to target people who also have large dogs because they tend to be the dogs that suffer the most in the heat and therefore require a product like this. So probably not the best time of year to be selling a product like this, but the premise still works. The premise is still the same. If you're advertising a golf product, use interests which are targeted towards people who play golf, people who are super interested in golf. In fact, what I'll do later in the week, if not next week, because I've already got this week's videos planned out, I will do a video specifically on Facebook ad interests and how I go about finding them and targeting them and getting the cheapest audiences possible. So keeping on track then, I'm gonna be targeting large dog breeds which are relevant for this product. So straight away, let me just move my microphone. We can go for German Shepherd in dogs. If you kind of hit a blank when it comes to your interest research, not many people know this. If you hit suggestions, make sure you have a base interest in there. It just makes it so much quicker and easier. Facebook is going to recommend other interests most similar to what you already have pre-selected. So because I already have a large dog breed selected, it's going to give me some other large dog breeds. So Labrador Retriever will be a good one. Um, Rottweiler, I think they're pretty big dogs. Golden Retriever, uh, Labrador's big dog. Adachend or Dachend, they're big dogs. Uh, what else have we got? Maltese, I'm not quite sure what that is. Huskies, I know they're big dogs. Dobermans, I know they're massive dogs. So we've got a pretty decent selection there. I've got an estimated audience size of 13 to 15 million people, which is probably on the large size. So what I'll do is let this ad run a little bit longer just because the audience size is so big. If you wanted to get super fancy with your targeting, then what you could do is go define further and then we could include interests which are related to dog owners. So let's go for dog training. Oh, dog trainer. So this way you have to be careful to make sure you don't get dog trainer because otherwise it's going to make the audience super specific. So we can see there are fewer than a thousand people. So we'll get rid of this and go back to the interest of dog training. which is here pets dog training. And now that's brought, it's still pretty large to be fair. So in fact, let's try one more. Let's go for something else related to dog owners. So dog walking. Let's see what we get. So it's only brought it down a little bit. It's probably because we've got so many breeds at the top here. Let's get rid of, mm, let's think. Let's get rid of Labrador Retriever. Still 10 million. Let's get rid of Husky. Let's see what happens if we just bring it down to one. Labrador, it's down to 8 million. So it's still a pretty large interest, which is um, quite surprising actually. So essentially what I've done here is I'm targeting people who are interested in German Shepherds and they're interested in dog training and they're interested in dog walking. The chances of people being included in this audience that don't own a dog is gonna be super slim and therefore it's gonna make the quality of the audience quite high. And in return, we should get a pretty decent click-through rate. You don't have to adopt this same strategy part of Facebook ads is testing a few different things to see what works. I've given you a couple of different options here. This is what we call flex targeting. Um, and then just targeting a single interest is also another option. Another way of doing it is just targeting a category of interest like I did originally of just adding lots of different large dog breeds into here. Once we have our tags and options, then what I would typically do is go back up and rename the ad set at this point. So I would just go for large dog breeds and then I'd put the audience size, which is 10 million. That way, when I'm looking at my ad sets, 
on the surface level, I can see how much it's spent, how much it's reached, and what the actual audience size is. So I can get a, a rough kind of reflection of how much of the overall audience I've tested. So I'll know whether I need to keep running it for a few more days or not. Moving down then below the detail tags in sections, we have placements. Again, unless you know 100% sure where your customers are coming from, just go with Advantage Plus, also known as Automatic. Facebook has renamed everything to Advantage Plus to sound really fancy, but it's just the same. Um, again, once you've run the test, Facebook will show you which placements are bringing your customers. So you'll be able to then readjust and go again, focusing your budget on those most profitable areas. We can leave optimization and delivery as default, and we can move on to the actual ad creative itself. So when it comes to the ad creative, typically I like to go with two different creatives. One will be an image ad, which I'm gonna show you how to set up in this video. And then the other option will be a video ad. Essentially everything is the same apart from the actual visual creative itself. So in this one, I'm just gonna go for um, image one, or you could name it image of a certain dog. Whatever reference you decide to choose is completely up to you. Um, identity, we're gonna go for Facebook and Instagram. Haven't got the Insta account linked to this, but just make sure you put Instagram in there. And then we're gonna go into ad setup. We're gonna create ad. We're gonna go for a manual upload because we're not gonna use a catalog. We're not gonna complicate things at this point. We just wanna focus on advertising one particular product to one particular audience. What we now get to do is choose a format. So we're gonna go for a single image or video remove that we can keep this as default and then we can actually get into the ad creative and this is what the actual ad physically looks like on somebody's device so we're going to add an image i've already got this pre-uploaded so we can use this as an example i'm going to go for recommended recommended and recommended and click next i'm not going to use any of these enhancements because at this point you will have had your creative made specifically and it should be of decent quality and on the right hand side as you can see it starts to populate it and give us an idea of what it's going to look like so from here onwards we've got a few different options primary text headline description i'm going to remove this leave that default call to action we want to change this to shop now make sure you scroll down and hit shop now um, but let's rather than jump ahead let's go back to the primary text so if i just put primary text in here you'll be able to see where the changes take effect and it's this text at the top here this is the most important line of the creative of your ad because this is going to be the first few words um, that your customer reads so something that pops into mind for a product like this of the objective here is to keep a dog cool um, so it could be does your dog suffer in the heat question mark we're asking dog owners a question and if they do suffer in the heat we've got their attention and they're going to watch our creative they're going to watch our video or look at our image to see exactly what we've got to say or how we can help them then in the next line what i'll typically do is do a very brief description about what the product is so it could be our um, anti-scratch or anti-rip more importantly anti-rip guarantee pool is tailor-made for even the biggest pooches or something like that or even the biggest dogs or even the biggest four-legged friends keep it friendly keep it relevant to the niche the dog niche is not a super professional super uptight super strict niche it's quite casual fun loving and happy you could even build on this or add certain things like emojis um, just to help capture attention, that sort of thing. Just make sure you keep it relevant to the type of image um, and impression that you're trying to give off to your customer. So does your dog suffer in the heat? So after this, we could put um, the sweating emoji. Let me see if I can find it. So on Emojipedia, this is where I will come to for all of my emojis to copy and paste them across. So this is obviously quite attention grabbing. Um, back to our ads manager. Go paste that in. So does your dog suffer in the heat? Straight away, it's going to capture attention. We could even put like a dog emoji next to that. So they know that we're talking about dogs. Even though we've mentioned it, people will skim over things. They don't read every single word. So once this loads, we can copy this in. Our anti-rip guarantee pool. So we're solving a pain point. 
um, as a dog owner, a large dog owner, every pool we've bought for him, he just jumps in ripped in the space of seconds. So this is letting other dog owners know who probably have experienced that same pain point that we have a pool that's made for big dogs and it has an anti-rip guarantee. Next, we can move on to the headline and description. So there's a few different things you can put in here. If I go back to Emojipedia and we go for star, uh, this is the one that we're looking for. We can copy this, go back to our headline and paste it in five times. And it could be, I don't know, whatever your star rating is. So 4.7 out of five customer rating. And once that populates, it give off quite a nice effect. And then the description could be, if we go back to Emojipedia and put UK because I'm selling to the UK. I could copy this in and then I could put free UK delivery. And when this populates, that should look quite nice in the preview as well. It's not gonna populate for me. Nope. <laughs> What we can also do is you can click share, um, send a notification to Facebook when you open it on your phone, you'll be able to see it. Or if we go to link sharing and go to 30 days and then copy this, it will open up in a new tab and we'll be able to see exactly what it looks like. We'll let that populate and come back to that in a second. Okay, so for whatever reason, it doesn't want to work for me today, but that's fine. Um, once we've published it, we can obviously just make sure you go back and just double check it does display exactly how you want it to. Um, moving on then to finish the video off, we've got a shop now, call to action, no info labels, the destination, website URL. This is going to be the actual product page URL. So when people click that button, it takes them to the very page in which they can hit that add to cart button. This is imperative to your success. This is super important. If you put any other link, if you put your homepage link in, it's gonna significantly affect your conversion rate, significantly harm your results. So make sure that you copy and paste the product page URL and you test it is indeed the correct one as well. And so with that being said, there's nothing else to go through, all the default options. Um, you can cross check these against yours. You've got website events, you've got the correct URL in there that's been verified, of course. And then when you're ready to go, you simply hit publish and it takes a little bit of time, but then essentially it'll go into the review process. It can take anywhere between sort of an hour and maybe two days for Facebook to review the ad and okay it. It will let you know straight away if there's any errors. So I didn't put any URL in down here. Um, hence why this isn't working. But what will happen is your ad will go into a review process. It will say in review and you'll get a notification of when the Facebook ad actually goes live. And then it's out there in the big wide world um, for people to see and you never know when that first sale is going to come. It's an exciting time. And if you do get that first sale and it's because you've followed along this video, I'd love to hear it. Make sure you come back or reach out and contact me in some way and let me know. And so with that being said, then guys, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for staying with me this long if you're still here. If you want some extra help on top of this, make sure you check out the free training in the top of the video description below. You'll also get access to 194 profitable product ideas handpicked by myself, all of that for free. So make sure you check that out. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.